at least in the countryside, you'll have some delay. You'll have some time to, to uh, team up with neighbors, establish good security before trouble comes your way. In the big city, the trouble will be there within two or three days. You won't have time to organize and prepare. Yeah, this is from the Coming Collapse blog, and it's uh, got the numbers and links to the um, uh, Detroit Free Press and others. But when the economy falls apart, desperate people will do desperate things, and many homeowners will fight back. Justifiable homicide in Detroit rose a staggering 79% just last year alone. Uh, and now in some of these areas, the police are saying get guns, protect yourself. But I've seen other areas where they're saying don't get guns. Yeah, we're laying half the cops off. The other half are just going to do revenue generating. So you're on your own. We're not going to respond to these 35 crimes in Oakland. But don't you dare have a gun and defend yourself. What an immoral, <laughs> sick position of the uh, liberals. Yeah, that's unfortunately, that's the whole statist mindset, which is they, they make everyone dependent, but then they don't have any guarantee of government services. If you look at places like Detroit, the response times, even for violent crimes that stretch out into hours, well, if you, if you, if you have to wait hours before the police arrive, all they're basically good for is filling out paperwork and toting off the body bags. You have to depend on yourself. It's essentially yo-yo time. You're on your own. Now, obviously, if a... Solar flare hit us directly. That could blow out a lot of the power grid. We've gone over the transformers and the rest of it. There could be a nuclear war. They're trying to start war with Iran right now. Russia and China are threatening. But for me, it's just the economic collapse that if we did have another depression, uh, that, that I mean, we're already seeing a lot of stuff unravel. And we saw the government couldn't take care of Katrina. I mean, are you saying this collapse is going to happen or the probability's gone up? What I, in I, can't say that, I can't say with any certainty. All I can say is that there is a risk. And if, if I was an actuarial accountant in the insurance business, uh, I wouldn't be, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be issuing policies for governments. How's that? Um, now, you mentioned the, the power grid going down. You mentioned EMP and you mentioned solar flares. But there's one other way the power grid could go down that most people don't realize, and that is a malicious hacker attack could get into the SCADA software, which is the system control and data acquisition software that controls the power grid all the way from the power plants and the hydroelectric dams all the way to your home power meter. There's SCADA software all the way in between now, and that's at risk. So, yes, uh, if the grid goes down, we're in, in big, big trouble. Well, couldn't something like Stuxnet travel around the world and come back and do the same thing? Because, I mean, they've said they want to have the government take over the Internet to protect uh, power grids, but... Does it, that stuff have to be injected directly in, you know, to the computers at a power plant? Well, the thing is, is that um, when all the SCADA software was originally designed in the 1960s and the 1970s, it was before the days of hacking. So they left huge vulnerabilities in the code. And now, in recent times, they've created other portals into all of these software systems so that now someone can literally just dial in or log in by an IP address and go about their nefarious business. Incredible. James Wesley Rawls, stay there. More with him straight ahead. Because remember, 20 years ago, he wrote about what's now happening. I want to know how he knew. Dress up in your frock of yellow. We're going to have James Wesley Rawls back on with us uh, Friday for an extended interview on InfoWars Nightly News. And we're going to get more into solutions and ways from his research. He thinks that you can protect yourself and prepare for this. If there's a 10% chance society is going to collapse, then we should all get prepared. And I, I got to say it's 50-50 right now. And governments are saying that. The head of the IMF said that last month. I mean, they're talking about a road warrior scenario. We'll be talking to our guest more in just a moment. Okay, without further ado, you know, I don't know why I haven't ever gotten this guy on. It's so great to have him here with us, one of the leading survivalist expert writers out there. Uh, but, but, but I know you don't like to toot your horn, but let's go back then to Patriots. 1991, you're writing it. How did you write about global governance coming via economic collapse? Because reading you know, The Patriot, now the sequel, Survivors, or Patriots, 
there it is. I mean, how did you know in 1991? And then I was asking you, you believe in the global government threat, but not that it's conspiratorial. And you were making the point that, no, it's just a system. It's not that it's in total control and under every rock. And I agree with you. It's that it's from the top, the compartmentalized system. They're trying to get control. They're trying to establish global government. It's not here yet. We can still reverse it. Please, please get into how you knew all this, how you broke it down, and then all the other facets of, 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 of how you see these threats unfolding, including the econ like where they try to crash the economy, you were saying during the break, and then that backfires on them. Uh, please continue. Well, I just see it as a logical progression. Uh, we live in a very fragile society. We have um, a, a system where uh, our, our constitutional government is at, at risk. Anytime there's major disruption, there's always the possibility that someone may try to step in to, quote, restore order, unquote, and you end up with a government that's far, far worse, that you end up with total government. And I think people need to be vigilant. And if they're, they're vigilant and well-prepared, they'll be in a position to hopefully speak up and do something about it. In a worst case, uh, we could end up with a situation like I described in Patriots and in Survivors, where you ended up with a, with a power vacuum that's created by economic collapse and a foreign occupying army comes in uh, to restore order. And then you end up, as I described in Patriots, in a war of resistance. A, a guerrilla warfare situation where you're trying to restore constitutional government. God forbid we ever get to that point, but I think people need to be prepared even for that. All right, let me stop you there. I, you know, my frustration with great guests like yourself that are telling the truth is that everything you say, there's 50 points I want to make backing you up. But people can pull this up. The Banff Canada 2006 North American Union SPP meeting. Judicial Watch sued, got thousands of pages of documents, or right at about a thousand pages, actually. And in there, the first thing they say in the meeting is, this is in my film Endgame, screenshots of it. A, keep this secret. We're going to have North American Union integration by stealth, but we're going to use military crises, drug crises, flu crises, economic crises to merge the governments. And now they're already doing that with cross regions with the drug war. And that's being announced. And they say... We'll use each other's foreign troops and each other's nations. And now it was always, you know, oh, I was at a military base and the general said, get ready for the New World Order. To now we have the videos. We have the news articles where, you know, generals questioned by Congress about plan for I-4 troops during crises or Mexican troops to be used to fight U.S. terrorists uh, or NLE-09, FEMA press release. 14 countries working with FEMA to drill on suppressing uprisings. John Warner Defense Authorization Act saying it's to suppress the states, the governor's councils, the rural councils, right out of Red Dawn, the tattletale squads, the clergy response teams. I mean, they're setting up for a suppression of civil war. And it looks like the globalists want to have that civil war with the American people, and they're going to call us the terrorist. When, when they come arrest Alex Jones or John Wesley Rawls, uh, or, or James Wesley Rawls, when they do things like this, well, we're just the terrorist. And, and I mean, th they're, th they're the ones gearing up for it. Uh, uh, your comments on that rant? Well, it very well could be a, a big setup. I, I think, though, that the statists and globalists may be uh, setting up a situation that's going to get out of their control. If they attempt to orchestrate a stock market collapse, or a banking panic, uh, or, or something along that line, uh, they could very well get away from them. They could end up with a situation where the rioting and looting gets completely out of control. Government agencies are unable or unwilling uh, to respond. You could end up with individual police officers and firemen afraid to literally leave their home, leave their families unprotected, so they won't show up for work. That was what I described in Patriots. And that happened in New Orleans. Yeah. And uh, you also ended up with police officers looting, uh, literally. I mean, they were caught on camera. Well, let's looting. face it. Our police are not as moral as they were, and the studies are there 50 years ago. In the old days, people were not even that they were such tough guys, but it's like, hey, this is combat. We're going in. Nowadays, the whole culture at these mass shootings everywhere is sit there for four hours while you're told what to do by the feds. So now there's like this culture of being paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we could see a situation where 
whether it's orchestrated or not, we could have a, a societal collapse. We could have things come completely unraveled. Again, the linchpin is the power grid. Things could come unraveled to the point where even someone who was hoping to be the one to come in and restore order and institute a, uh, their brand of government, the situation could get completely out of their control. And we could see a, uh, a complete unraveling where the cities become uninhabitable. Once the, the power grid goes down, there's about a two or three day supply of, of water in most uh, civic water systems, so gravity fed from tanks. But there are very few cities that have end to end gravity fed water. They're all almost all dependent upon the power grid. So if the grid goes down, the water stops flowing, the toilets stop flushing, and then suddenly you have a huge public health crisis on your hands. The cities become uninhabitable. Commerce comes to a halt. You have this mass exodus of people from the big cities, what I refer to as the golden horde, pouring out of the cities. And it's a, a situation where it's difficult to get the apple court cart back on its wheels. Uh, yeah, so much time has gone into building the infrastructure that it works really well, but it's super delicate. And, and expanding on that, uh, it was like five years ago, a hurricane hit Texas. I forget which one they hit all the time. And Houston flooded with about five feet of water. And we have a ranch uh, in, uh, in, in East Texas family land about 130 miles north of Houston. It's about 100 miles south of Dallas. Well, Buffalo, Texas is outside Buffalo, Texas and Fairfield. And... I just happened to be there hunting and doing some shooting when the hurricane hit. And I thought, well, I'll just go have fun and go hunting there in the hurricane. I don't care because it was just rainstorm by the time it hit there. And I was in the small towns. They were reporting on robberies, uh, people getting shot. And there were hordes of people. And I'm saying it's illegal aliens because that was the main group because there's something like five million illegal aliens in the, in the, in the Houston area. Uh, just everywhere. The illegal aliens were driven out because that's all I saw, and were, and were robbing and stuff because, the, the, because they were pushed into the countryside and they were getting shot and stuff. And the news didn't report on it, but I saw blurbs. I mean, they were getting shot. And, and there were also some other folks running around, but it was mainly the illegals uh, because they were driven out of the city. I mean, can you um, uh, so that scenario, I saw that happen. Same thing happened in New Orleans in the, in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. There were refugees as far as four or 500 miles away. And they created, they brought this whole wake of a high crime rate with them. And that was just one localized area, essentially one big city uh, that was badly affected. Imagine if every major city in the country simultaneously went through a major economic collapse and power grid failure. There's actually three power grids in the country, a western grid, an eastern grid, and a Texas grid. Uh, if the power grids go down, uh, we could see major rioting and looting going on in, in virtually every urban area. And yes, there will be some pretty large ripple effects that come, come from that. Uh, I just pray that the majority of your listeners team up and be ready to hunker down. It, it means having a deep larder, being very well stocked up, very well trained, and having, you know, keeping your radar up, basically, keeping a, a, an eye on the big picture and uh, being ready to at least rebuild, you know, from the ground up, from your local area up to reestablish commerce, reestablish law and order, and I mean constitutional law and order. Well, I know that from previous events, when things get really bad, the police and others don't show up. And I cannot imagine what will happen if the welfare checks didn't show up for a month. It would be burning cities. And, and then what's going to happen after the welfare class does burn down the city? Then there will be even less infrastructure. It is going to be hellish. Yes, it, it, we, we could. If you look at what's going on at, in Detroit right now, for example, where you have – they're actually turning off streetlights because the, 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 some of the suburbs of Detroit can't even afford to run streetlights. Um, then you end up, it's, it's this cascade of events. You end up with a lack of police protection, a, a uh, no response from, from burglar alarm companies, for example. Uh, and then after people have 
you know, cleaned out these abandoned houses, then they resort to stripping out the, the copper wiring. So they're literally destroying the infrastructure. So even if the power grid were to come back up, <laughs> there'd be, you know, it, the infrastructure would be so destroyed uh, that it would be months or years or even, you know, conceivably even generations. Before. Humans without a job who aren't self-sufficient are like locusts.